Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles, and this is the last video of the week. There'll be no video going up tomorrow, because today, as soon as I've uploaded this video, I'm heading up to London for London Super Comic Con, and I'll be spending the whole weekend in London attending that. But, back in time for Mingles with Jingles on Monday, and today, it's World of Warships time. As I'm sure you all know, patch 0.5.3 was released yesterday, and today's video has absolutely nothing to do with that. This is all about... The most overpowered Tier 3 ship in the game, the St. Louis, the Tier 3 American battleship. What are you talking about, Jingles? It's not the American Tier 3 battleship, that's the South Carolina. St. Louis is the American Tier 3 cruiser. It bloody well is the American Tier 3 battleship. Let me just put it this way. If you had a choice of taking the St. Louis or the South Carolina in a game, I don't think too many people would choose the South Carolina. And if a South Carolina and a St. Louis were in a fight, I don't think too many people would be putting their money on the South Carolina either. Um, th this ship is, I mean, I love it to bits, but it is gloriously overpowered. It's incredibly tough. Okay, it's not very fast, but it's incredibly tough, and it's made out of guns. They couldn't give you a more American ship if they tried. In fact, I have an unreliable authority that the St. Louis is actually fueled by apple pie. It's that American. <laughs> I mean, look at the volume of fire the thing's capable of kicking out. Of course, it's not particularly fast, and the guns don't have a great range, but that kind of works in its advantage, because here's the thing. The velocity of the ammunition fired from the guns isn't that bad at all. It's not like when you're in, for example, the destroyer like the Samson or the Clemson, and you're firing at the extreme limit of the range of those guns. You have to give the target so much lead in order to hit them. That doesn't really happen with the St. Louis, because by the time you're in range to actually hit the targets that you're shooting at, you're close enough that the shots take next to no time to get there. And you tend to have a lot more guns than they have, and you can take a beating in a way that most of the targets that this ship is going to find itself fighting cannot. And not only that, people tend to have a bugger of a time trying to make their mind up what kind of ammunition to shoot at you when you're in a St. Louis. High explosive is always reliable. It'll set you on fire, it'll do some damage, but it won't do a lot. Armour piercing, on the other hand, and it's the general rule of thumb that you're in a cruiser, you fire armour piercing at other cruisers because you'll score citadels and you do all kinds of damage, but that doesn't happen with the St. Louis, does it? <laughs> no. No. Because it's so tough. There have been any number of occasions where I've been in a game in a Tier 3 or a Tier 4 cruiser and I've seen a St. Louis on the enemy team and think, haha, cruiser, load the armour piercing, let him have a volley, and he just shrugs it off. <laughs> because this ship is, I may have mentioned this once or twice, incredibly tough for a Tier 3 cruiser. Oh, this is a Drac, by the way. <laughs> Where are my manners? I should have introduced him ages ago. He's sailing the St. Louis for us in this replay, and he's in a division with a pair of South Carolinas. Don't hold it against them. Somebody has to play the South Carolina if you want to get to the Wyoming and the New York. Meanwhile, Zadrak has just claimed his first victim, and he's looking around for some more targets. Notice that destroyer over there who's making a beeline in the other direction. That guy's just launched a very, very sneaky spread of torpedoes here. Look at this. That was expertly aimed, and he clips Zadrak right in the back end of the ship, knocks out his steering, causes flooding. Zadrak immediately attends to the flooding, sorts it out. But he lost a lot of health there. Starts trying to shoot that destroyer up before he makes a clean getaway, but the chances of him hitting a manoeuvring destroyer at this kind of range... Well, better than most, because you've got so many guns in the St. Louis. It's, it really is a case of throw enough shit at the wall, and some of it is likely to stick, but the destroyer gets away without taking any damage this time. Now, check this out. Coming around the other side, checks to his rear. Mm -hmm, yeah, could be worse, but over this side, that's a lot of battleships and cruisers. It's most of the enemy team. The South Carolina that he's targeted has taken the brunt of his team's firepower so far, and he's turned around, he's hauling ass in the other direction, trying to get out of shooting range. For that South Carolina, however, it's a case of too little, too late. Zadrak is at just exactly the right range here, that with the elevation that his guns require to hit that target, he's able to loft the shells right over that island, and take him out for his second kill. So he's nailed one St. Louis, and now he's nailed a South Carolina. He's scored 53 hits with his guns so far, by the time he's finished this match, that number is going to be over 200. However, let's just take stock of the situation for the moment. Down here at this end of the map, there's a whole bunch of the enemy team furiously defending their own cap. 
up at the other end of the map, we, we saw Zadrak stop and turn around and look behind him um, around about the time he took that torpedo hit as he was heading down this end to ninja the kill on that South Carolina and assist in the attack on the enemy flag. And at the time, the situation up to the north wasn't too bad. There were roughly the same amount of friendly and enemy ships. Unfortunately, the friendly ships that were up there kind of sucked pretty hard. They're all dead. And I'm pretty sure there are two cruisers, both of them St. Louis's, and one South Carolina up there. And they're now, or very, very soon, going to be starting to cap Zadrak's flag. Which is putting his team in an awful position, because they're still kind of outgunned and outnumbered down this end of the map, where they're the strongest. And if anybody turns back to deal with these enemy ships approaching their own flag, that's going to dilute their offence even further. So it's kind of a case of you've, got to, you've, you've either all got to go in one direction or none of you. And to the team's credit, most of them do turn around and come back to address the situation here. But check out the shooting of that St. Louis at the back there. It's not one shot that he fires at Zadrak. And he's doing nothing but firing at Zadrak. But not one shot lands closer than 150 metres from his ship. And remember, this is one of the guys that won the fight. <laughs> up, up to the north. And he couldn't hit the side of a barn from the inside. Zadrak set the other St. Louis on fire, which is nice. But you've got to ask yourself the question, if his shooting is that bad, how badly did the rest of Zadrak's team suck up there? Oh, and he's killed the first St. Louis. Hooray. Unfortunately, he's about to lose one of his division mates. That South Carolina is burning in what looks like, well, everywhere. And he couldn't do anything about it. He's just gone to Davy Jones' locker. So they've just lost a St. Louis. Zadrak has lost a division mate. And the team are kind of milling around, all in this location. They're taking fire from two different directions. Torpedoes in the water. It's that little bugger in the destroyer again. Quite surprising, actually. He's going for Zadrak again. It's like he's trying to finish him off. But the torpedoes should have been aimed at the cruiser over there, to the right and in front of him, because that cruiser spotted the torpedoes in the water and gave Zadrak plenty of time to avoid them. Oh, actually, no, he uh, he hedged his bets, didn't he? He fired a spread of torpedoes at Zadrak and that other cruiser. And that's what tipped Zadrak off, and unfortunately he missed the other cruiser as well. So uh, it was a brave attempt, but it didn't quite pay off. And now you have to pay the pike to Sonny Jim. And Zadrak's hit him, and he's critted him. He's obviously going to repair that, and he's retreated into the safety of the smokescreen. But there's a whole bunch of fire coming in. And, yeah. That destroyer's still spotted. He's not quite as safe in that smokescreen as he might like to think he is. And any second now, Zadrak's going to have some shots at him. And he's got to take this guy out while he's got the opportunity, because that, I think, is the Japanese Tier 3. Oh no, where's he gone? The Wakataki. Because he's only firing two torpedoes. Let me check. Yep, it's the Wakataki. He's only firing two torpedoes from each launcher, which means he's going to have a really, really fast reload. And he's probably already lining up another torpedo shot. Unfortunately, it's the guns at the rear of the ship that are ready to fire first, and then the middle of the ship, and just that little spit of land sticking out is enough to enable that destroyer to get away again. And Zadrak puts it into a hard turn, assuming that there are going to be torpedoes there. And you can you can do this in the St. Louis. It's actually a very, very good little tactic. It, it You just turn circles in the ship, and you're constantly presenting different angles towards the ships that are shooting at you and because you've got guns all the way down the sides of both sides of the ship you're constantly able to keep that return fire going and I don't know if you saw there but the destroyer did manage to get some torpedoes away but his target died before they could reach him he's managed to set that South Carolina on fire and he's he's waiting for this destroyer to pop out there he is there's the little bugger he saw that one coming a mile away and this is your worst nightmare in a destroyer this kind of short range against the St. Louis. The, the torpedoes are out. Probably only managed to get one set of torpedoes away because he did take the first salvo through the uh, gap between the two islands over there, but it doesn't pay to take any chances. The Wakataki has a very, very fast reload in his torpedo tubes. He keeps the turn going. But no, if there were any more torpedoes in the water, he would have seen them by now. So, brave move from the Wakataki. Balls of steel going up against the St. Louis. And that kind of range, unfortunately... No cigar for you this time. Now then, the situation. They've just nailed an enemy ship and then just as quickly <laughs> lost one of their own. So there's only three of them left, but they've killed one of the enemy St. Louis's. That's the other one. The enemy team still have three battleships, two South Carolinas and a Kawachi. And they also have the Japanese Tier 3 cruiser 
the Tenryu. And don't forget, that thing has torpedoes. He's managed to set this enemy St. Louis on fire, and it looks like he's immediately used his repair consumable. He's put the fire out. Now, you'll notice that Zadrak's high explosive barrel, as well as setting this guy on fire, is also stripping guns away from the side of his ship, and I'm pretty sure, judging by the damage that Zadrak has taken in return, that at least initially, this guy was firing armor-piercing. Now, Zadrak isn't particularly well angled, so this guy does, I'm relatively sure, there we go, manage to score a couple of citadels. But this is the trade-off. Yes, you might score a couple of citadels, although he's probably not going to do it now, because Zadrax... Well, actually, he's flattening the angle out again. But Zadrax's high explosive barrage is doing consistent damage to him, and setting him on fire, and knocking guns out, which is reducing the amount of firepower that he's going to take in return. And Zadrax got him. He doesn't have a lot of health left, but you can see the trade-off. Yes, you may score some citadel penetrations if you fire low-caliber tier 3, tier 4 cruiser caliber armor piercing ammunition out of St. Louis. And, oh, oh, actually, we'll continue this discussion in a moment. Zadrak, bend over, grab your ankles, and kiss your ass goodbye. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> what just happened there? A Kawachi came around from the side of the island at point-blank range, fired every gun he's got, and all of his secondaries, and 90% of them missed? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Battleships. <laughs> the all of your eggs in one basket class of ship. How the, Here it comes again. Nope, they all missed two. How the hell is this even possible? If that guy hasn't smashed his keyboard into a million different pieces by now, I volunteer to go around his house and do it for him because... <laughs> just... What just happened? How did that... Battleship accuracy. <laughs> and now it's two on one. He's got one division mate in the South Carolina, still standing. And... Ooh. Right. Okay, shit just got real. Um, Alright. Um, yeah, he's got less than 300 health. Just the promise of a shot from that South Carolina, regardless of what ammunition he chooses to fire at him, is going to put him on the bottom. What do you do in this kind of situation? Because going after us, I mean, the South Carolina is not a particularly good ship, but when you're in a St. Louis on 297 health, the South Carolina doesn't have to be a particularly good ship. He's still going to kill you. So Drax's best real option at the moment is to, because he's down by the enemy flag anyway, he needs to make it into that cap circle. Unfortunately, the St. Louis isn't very fast. You can see the conversation going on in chat there between Zadrak and the captain of that very unfortunate Kawachi, who seems to be taking things remarkably calmly. <laughs> Certainly a lot more than I would be if what just happened to him had happened to me. Um... And I think Zadrak is definitely going to try and cap here, because going up against that South Carolina, well, let's just say it wouldn't be wise. So, he heads for the cap. Did I mention this thing was slow? Look, it, it's right there. Just get into the cap circle before the South Carolina, and, yo, oh, shit on a shingle. The South Carolina started capping, and he's still just, no, oh, crap. He's going to have to go and fight him. Well, then again, maybe not. Maybe he's a complete idiot and he's just driving through Zadrak's cap circle in order to come down here and kill him. But he isn't. <laughs> he's not that stupid. So Zadrak, risking giving his position away, has to start putting some fire into the cap circle and there he is. Has he been spotted? You have to assume he has. But he only has to hit this guy once. There it is! He's done it! He's reset the cap! Alright, Zadrak, you've reset the cap. <laughs> Stop pushing your luck. Oh, I know it's nice to see those numbers, but you really don't want to die now. He's almost certainly seen you, and if you can hit him from this range, and he's turning around and get all of his guns pointing at you, yes, you've set him on fire, but for God's sake, get him to cover. <laughs> Here it comes. Here it comes. And... Oh, that was close. Okay, Zadrak, you've reset the cap. Stop pushing your luck. Remember, it takes up to 20 seconds after... Jeez, that was just getting far too close for comfort. Up to 20 seconds after you've fired your guns for you to lose the view range 
penalty. He's he can still see you, the track. What are you doing? <laughs> you don't want to kill him. That well, actually, I don't know. Maybe you could kill him. You've set him on fire again, so he's obviously used his damage consumable, and he's going to keep burning. No. Oh, there's the high caliber to go with the Confederate. You can't see him anymore, but you pretty much know where he is, and your shots are still hitting. So, and he can't see you. There is absolutely Zadrak. Get into cover behind that island and stop pushing your luck. You've made your point, all right? <laughs> if he comes around the side of that island and your guns are still firing, he only has to hit you once. And I think, yeah, common sense prevails. <laughs> Look at the state of this ship. And he is, in fact, going to cut his losses, get into cover behind the safety of this island, and not risk throwing the game because he was determined to get another kill to add to his already impressive tally and the Confederate and the High Caliber Award in this particular game of World of Warships. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> cutting it really, really fine there. That's the Drac in the St. Louis, Uncle Sam's finest. Yeah, you just hide behind that island and chill out for a bit. You have won this one. And that's it for this week, folks. Um, as mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm heading off to London Super Comic Con, travelling up today, and I'll be there over the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. So the next video from me will be Monday's Mingles with Jingles. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Enjoy your weekend, take care, and I'll catch you next time.